Welcome to Point Black. This is your host, Fenomen Crypto. Our guest today is Peter McCormack. He is the host of What Bitcoin Did and Defiance podcast. A few days ago, he released Defiance episode number 43, The Money Game, Tears Edition. The subject in question is how the government and big business is stealing our money. I suggest you check it out. Without further ado, I'll leave you with this episode. Point Blank is brought to you by Primex VT, the exchange that makes possible to trade with leveraged legacy markets from a single Bitcoin-based account. Hey there, Panama. How are you? Thank you for having me on. How has it been for you on your van and your family during COVID? Yeah, it's been a really interesting time This going through this COVID experience. I have two children. Um, my son is with me full time. My daughter is 50-50. So it's been a lot of spending time with them. I usually travel a lot for work, I usually do quite a few flights, travel to do my interviews. So this is probably the longest time in about three years that I've uh, I've not been traveling and I've been stuck at home, which, you know, there's been some really interesting positives that have come out of it. Just spending time alone with the children, is, again, has been great. But we've exercised more. We're not really driving. I, I haven't actually put any fuel in my car now for nearly three months, which is incredible. I only use the car now to go and do the shopping. Uh, I got my bike fixed. I, I tend to bike everywhere now. I'm exercising daily and going for runs, eating a lot better food. We're cooking nearly every meal. We used to have at least one takeaway a week and go out for dinner once or twice a week. Now we're cooking every meal and cooking good meals. I've learned to do a roast. Um, we had an Italian night and a Mexican night. So yeah, we're really connecting with each other and doing the kind of things that we've always wanted to do. The kind of things you put on your... Um, your uh, New Year's resolution list, but never really get round to because you're too busy. But now we've got the time to do the things we want to do. So a lot of really positives have come out of it. There have been a couple of negatives. You know, there, it's been a bit tense at times um, because I think just just being locked up at home can get a bit stressful. And also, I was actually I think I drank more than I would normally. So I've ended up cutting that, and knocking that on the head. But yeah, I drank more than normally. But in the main, I think life has been a lot better. We're living a healthier lifestyle. We're spending more time together. We're eating good food. We're exercising, and also having having some time to really think about and focus on work. Usually, when I'm traveling a lot, it's just a case of uh, getting the work out the door. But now I'm having the chance to really think about the work I'm making and the work I want to make in the future. So, outside of what has been devastating for a lot of people, people losing their lives, losing their jobs, um, we've actually ended up using this as a as an opportunity for for a number of things. What's your take on the COVID impact on the monetary system and Bitcoin? Oh, well, that's a big question. Um, I think it's very, very scary what's happening. I don't think we will see the full impact for some months. At some point, furlough schemes are going to stop. People are going to be allowed to go back to work, but they might not have a company to go back to. And the economics of it might not really work. I don't know what's going to happen to the airline industry, but I can imagine it will take years to recover if it ever does which means there's a lot of planes out there which are not going to be used. There's a lot of airlines which are going to struggle. And then you've got to look at a smaller business. Say you're a cafe and you have to operate social distancing. Maybe you don't have a peak rush hour anymore because you can't have that many people inside the cafe, which will lead to one or two things. Either you're going to have to raise your prices or you you might go out of business. So I don't think we're really going to see the full impact on a number of companies for a long time. Now, this might lead to a shift in what people do for work. Perhaps people will want to do new things, want to try things they've not done before. I've spoken to a few friends who have said they really don't want to return back to London now. They don't want that city life, which means perhaps they're going to be looking at different types of jobs. So, so in terms of um, the impact on the monetary system, I don't really think we're, we're going to know. I think there is going to be a growing distrust of government and money. Um, But then I have a bias because I work in that area. I produce content in that area. Um, But I I have had people coming to me over the last few weeks more than normal saying, Pete, tell me about this Bitcoin thing. I'm worried about inflation. Um, It's now a good time to invest. So I think what we are going to see is, is, well, I don't know what we're going to see, but we could see a situation where people become increasingly distrustful of government and the monetary system and the way it's managed and ultimately kind of get more people coming towards this bitcoin world which could lead to a long-term a better monetary system 
Compared to the rest of Europe, how has the UK fared with COVID? Yeah, well, I mean, in terms of deaths, we've had the highest amount. But again, we don't really know how deaths are recorded. It seems to be different from country to country. I mean, you only have to look at the infections in Russia and the number of deaths there to to see something that's very different from other countries. They've got a very high infection rate, very low number of deaths. Um, but how have we compared? How have we fared? I think... I think quite poorly. I think it's being handled quite badly by our government. But I would also say it's it's very easy to criticise from a distance. They're very tough decisions that these people are having to make. And I know in this Bitcoin world, everyone hates all government, but we do have government. So they have to make decisions. And almost every country outside of Sweden has tried to control this and tame this beast. Um, I think there's going to be a lot we're going to know in hindsight. Um, I think it was very difficult to predict what this all meant. It did feel very scary to begin with. But I don't think we've pe- fared particularly well. I don't think our government has done a particularly great job. I think it's highlighted some lack of preparedness for such a situation. And uh, perhaps that means in the future they, they they will have to have some kind of preparation for if there is a, ever a future p- pandemic. Um, perhaps this is a, a test run for something that could be worse in the future. But... Yeah, I don't think we fare particularly well. You think COVID was engineered or plain conspiracy against China? No, I don't believe COVID was engineered. And the reason being is, uh, I know, again, people don't like this, and I'm just going to refer to authority. All the experts that I followed who understand uh, pathogens and understand viruses, not a single one puts any credibility behind this being engineered now there are some people that are suspicious that this was a a, an escape from a lab in china and certainly i think i think it would be ideal if there was an independent body who could go and uh, research and 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 carry out some kind of investigation to what happened it's certainly a possibility Uh, but right now it's speculation i think china's making the speculation worse by clearly operating some form of cover-up but no i don't believe it was engineered What's my outlook for the world after COVID? Well, I think we have a, an opportunity right now. Um, you hear that statement. I can, can't remember the guy's name. He said, never let a good crisis go to waste. And that's often been used by people to refer to perhaps how governments respond to crisis. So post 9-11, we got, well, not we, but the Americans got... The Patriot Act, which has allowed the government to have uh, quite far-reaching authority to surveil the entire population, look at their bank accounts, look at pretty much everything they do, creates every, turns every American into a suspect in, in the hunt for terrorists. But we also ourselves have an opportunity to not let a good crisis go to waste. Can we change our, our lives for the better? Can we Can we live with those... New Year's resolutions we make every year and never doing them. Like for me right now, I'm spending time with my kids, I'm exercising daily, I'm cooking fresh food, I'm never driving my car. Like these are all positive changes. I don't want to go back to a world where um, I drive everywhere and I live on takeaways and I'm too busy to do anything. So I hope that we have a chance to reset things. And, and it isn't just like personally, we have a chance to reset government and its role in our life, reset money, reset education, reset healthcare, reset all these things that really have kind of just ended up morphing into kind of gross, uh, bureaucratic, bullshit ways of life. So yeah, I'm hoping this is a chance for a great reset and for us to to live kind of like a better version of ourselves. Boris Johnson, Donald Trump, yeah, Bolsonaro. Don't you see a pattern here? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, a little bit. I'm not sure what you're particularly asking me here. Um, um, (laughs) Yeah, I'm not really sure exactly what you're asking me here. Do I see a pattern? Um, I don't think Boris Johnson and Donald Trump are as similar as people actually think. Um, I think Donald Trump is a lunatic and not a career politician. And I think Boris Johnson, for example, is a career politician and not a lunatic, uh, definitely incompetent at times, but not not a lunatic. Um, I'm not sure the answer you want here. (laughs) From the places you've been, which are the most and least prepared for crypto adoption? Great question. Great question. 
Well, it depends what you mean in terms of crypto adoption. Um, I would say the most prepared is the US. That's where I tend to do most of my work. That's where most of the adoption is, the expansion of the technology, the, the companies, the, some of the biggest companies are there from you know exchanges to the financial services companies. Uh, there is obviously a regulatory framework there which has a strong lens over the world of crypto and Bitcoin. But I would say the US is most prepared in terms of adoption of crypto. But, and then in terms of most least prepared of all the places, oh, that's a, I mean, I don't know how you measure least prepared. Um, I mean, I went to Bolivia and it's been banned there. So there's very, very little, um, very little Bitcoin adoption. Um, I went to El Salvador and I met a, uh, a team who were using Bitcoin. But again, I think nationwide, I think it's, um, I, I, th I don't think it's particularly well prepared. Um, but I think I think Western countries are are the most prepared right now. And I haven't been to China, so I don't really know what's going on there. I have been to Taiwan and Hong Kong, and they're pretty well prepared. Um, but yeah, tough question, that one, in some ways. Have conditions improved for Bitcoin and crypto for mass adoption with everything that's happened in 2020? Where will it be in 10 years? Yeah, certainly things have improved and we're getting better security, better exchanges, we're getting uh, better wallets, yeah, it's getting easier for people to become self-sovereign. Uh, in some ways, things have got worse. I think the the level of KYC, AML um, and the regulations around that have made, th made the situation worse. I think companies like Chain Analysis have... have uh, created like this error suspicion over crypto and bitcoin which isn't great but it's never been easier to go and acquire bitcoin it's just can you do it in a way where your identity isn't attached to them and we're seeing like the impact of that we're seeing that if there is a hack or data loss that that can um, attach your id to your your bitcoin which is you know crazy and scary and i think at some point we need to somehow move away from this onerous kind of kyc because in the end it is actually very very damaging and it's uh puts risks on the holders of bitcoin where will we be in 10 years i've got a feeling we won't be that far different i did an interview with jeremy welch where he said the next few years are going to be some boring years which is a good thing in that the there's going to be a lot of boring work in uh, developing on the protocol, developing tools to make it easier to use Bitcoin. I think the most important thing that, that could potentially happen over the next 10 years is the uh, adoption potentially of Bitcoin by nation states. So we've now seen Iran talking about their mining strategy. There was a Goldman Sachs report out this week which talked about the impact, I think it was the impact of inflation on gold and Bitcoin and something else. Again, if companies like Goldman Sachs are including Bitcoin in their reports. We've got banking services for crypto companies from the likes of JP Morgan. It's this kind of acceptance now that Bitcoin's here. Bitcoin isn't going away. And it's whether nation states adopt it. Um, if that happens, that's going to be a real game changer because that, to me, that, that, that establishes Bitcoin as a global uh, asset, as a global currency, depends which we want to call it. But that really establishes it. And then when that happens, then that's going to be a real game changer for everyone. What is the latest update on your drama with Craig Wright? Well, we're still in a le well, we're still in a legal process. Um, it's a very, very lengthy process, multi-year. And one thing is that exposed to me is that really, if you don't have free speech, then the court system can be abused by the rich and the powerful to suppress the voices of the people to challenge things they do, which is obviously a very bad thing. So free speech is very, very important. But it's just a very lengthy process. There's not too much I can talk about. Uh, I still stand by everything I've said. I'm still uh, willing to defend myself. I will take this to full distance. I think it's very interesting following these multiple cases. There is a clear pattern of things going on here. But no, I can't talk too much about it. I'm just very, very confident of a win. Do you think chicks coins have a chance for Bitcoin or Bitcoin will steal the show? No, Bitcoin is king. I've got no real faith or desire or interest in any shitcoins, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Uh, the only mild interest I have is that I do think stablecoins have an important role in the ecosystem. And currently, most of them are established upon non-Bitcoin chains. And I would use a stablecoin. So by virtue of that, I would end up using something like Ethereum. Um, 
but I don't long term have much uh, faith in it. And I I will be looking at stable coins on Liquid because uh, I think that's also pretty interesting. All right, thank you for having me. I hope these answers were great. If anyone wants to reach out to me, you can. Uh, my email address is hello at whatbitcoindid.com. I am on Twitter at Peter McCormack, and you can follow me at whatbitcoindid.com or defiance.news. Many thanks to Peter for his time. We all know he's a crazy busy guy. Really honored to have him on Point Blank. If you have any question about Point Blank, hit me up on pointblankqa at pm.me. Thanks so much for listening. Peace.